you get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase from today's sponsor at squarespace.com forward slash forge. Welcome back. Today we're going to be making a Damascus steel dart. God, it's so easy when it's that thin. <laughs> it's so effortless when it's half inch round. Oh, brilliant. All right, so as you can see, I have been learning. And for once, I made myself two pieces in case I scrap the first. Now we're gonna have a quick look at what a dart is. It looks like there is this rear fin. Flutes. Flute component. This particular one is plastic. It can also be in metal like this aluminium one right there with a little paper thing. And then we have the round bit. I believe it's a barrel. And the sharp bit. I think the tip. I actually know nothing about darts, by the way. How do you know all this technology? I, I, I think maybe just from researching. Oh. Or maybe just common sense. I mean, it seems quite obvious, really. Mm. Not from all the time that you spend in a pub doing British things. No, I, I suck at darts. And I've, I've barely ever played darts as well. Oh. I actually think darts is a shit game, to be honest. Why did you suggest we make something from a shit game? Because <laughs> someone left a comment saying you should make a Damascus dart. Oh, you comment. should have told me. I could have said hello and thank you. The barrel is made out of some sort of steel or stainless steel on this one, and the sharp pointy bit is made out of tungsten. Now, I've never worked with tungsten, but the word tungsten often hangs around tools that are extremely hard, very brittle, and don't seem like the type of things that could be easily machined or ground. And so it makes me wonder, if I was to have a bit of tungsten, would I be able to do anything at all to it to make it look like a dart point? This particular bit of tungsten is a little bit larger in diameter than it needs to be, so it will need a lot of turning. I thought I was gonna have to make a threaded tungsten point when I was buying the materials. But of great interest to me is, is it even possible to machine tungsten in this workshop? Right, so in my little research about machining tungsten, I found some things I already assumed. It's very hard and very brittle, but I've also learned some things I didn't know. It is meant to be possible, and it is meant to be possible with tungsten carbide tooling, like the little insert that I have in now. As I assumed, it wears the tooling very quickly. So the reason I have this teeny weeny little bitty one is this is the only tool that I have spare inserts for. But the really, really, really interesting thing that I've learned is at about 400 degrees Celsius, tungsten changes from its primarily brittle state, I hope I'm getting the words right, to a slightly more ductile state. And so a lot of tungsten machining... Hey. <laughs> a lot of tungsten machining is done when heating the workpiece to 400 degrees Celsius. That might be what we have to do if it won't cut at room temperature. I have no idea about feeds and speeds, but frankly, I don't know about feeds and speeds in steel. All right, we're gonna start at a thousand ripums. Let's go. I'm so nervous that I'm going to lose an eyeball. Oh, we're touching. I don't know if we're cutting. Wait, maybe we are. Oh my goodness. I've definitely cut some tungsten, hell yeah. All right, let's take a cut across it. We're cutting tungsten, this is insane. Oh my goodness gracious me. Ow, something hit me. Makes a ghastly noise. Yeah, something weird is happening, I don't know. Very, very quick interruption to thank today's sponsor. And in thanking today's sponsor, Jamie, where have you been? I've been in Paris filming professional video games. So back in the day when this type of work was your regular thing, how did you find your clients? I've got a portfolio website that I made with Squarespace. 
How convenient. Now we talk about Squarespace as a really important tool if you're gonna be selling products, physical or digital, because you can sell unlimited products. But showcasing your work is more important than ever. And as your work and style develops, when you've got a Squarespace website, you can edit it on the go. Because they've got a handy dandy app that allows you to make a ton of changes, not only to your pages, the text, but also to your inventory. You can add products from your phone. It's really, really fantastic. You can also use approved third-party fulfillment platforms, which I recently did, for my little dog club's new t-shirt. It was an effortless connection, and everything about Squarespace is effortless because it's an all-in-one tool with no plugins, patches, or upgrades ever. And you can get started and see just how easy it is at squarespace.com forward slash forge with a 14-day free trial. And if you like it, which I'm pretty sure you will, you'll get 10% off your first purchase, including your domain purchase, using code FORGE at checkout. Thank you so much, Squarespace. Let's get back to the video. That's so weird. Oh, it might be wearing the tool really badly. So it was going nicely, but then on that last pass, it started rubbing really loudly and grabbing in all sorts of weird ways. We've got a big divot in here, which would kind of make it seem like it got sucked in. And I think the tool has just got mangled. It's really hard to tell if the tool has been damaged. It's almost like it's got flattened off over on this side right here, where it's rubbing. Oh, yes, that's exactly it. And rubbing on the tool and it's just eating it away. It is just eating that insert. While we're here, yeah. I have an interesting little insert. Hey! What's your insert? That was an accidental joke. My phone charger port is full of crud, so whenever you plug it in, it doesn't charge. And the microscope is very handy for scraping the crap out of it. Jamie, I might be the biggest moron in the world. What do you mean, why? Well, I think that there's a very easily accessible source of tungsten in the correct diameter that I probably already have. <laughs> <laughs> 2.3 millimeters. Oh boy. This is going to be very embarrassing. Oh, very, very, very embarrassing indeed. 2.3 millimeters! No! Jamie, I've got a perfect source of tungsten. We don't need to machine any. So I found that if you look at anything underneath this microscope, it looks incredibly interesting. That is disgusting. Right, uh, did we get a good click? It doesn't click, but it, it does go in very nice. So yeah, the thing that's inside a TIG torch, which has always and forever been called a tungsten, because it's made out of tungsten, is the exact size. Dart manufacturers clearly know how to find a good and effective source of tungsten in the world. Now, just as a matter of curiosity, I do want to try cutting the tungsten when it's hot. <laughs> Oh yeah, that definitely cuts easier. That's ridiculous. Can't believe the awesome colors. It looks just like the colors you get when you're tempering steel. Very vibrant. Right. So it cuts better when it's hot. What does that mean? It means nothing, it's just interesting. Now we can actually do the actual work and work on the barrel. That's the barrel machined from this side. Now what I've got to do is I've got to cut it off, flip her around, put her in the chuck the other way for us to finish the last little hole that goes through it that is going to be holding our tungsten. Right, we've got to separate the tungsten from the steel. I presume it's glued. But we need to do this in order to find out how deep the tungsten goes in, in case that's affecting the balance of it. Ta-da! Oh, wow! It barely goes in there, just only a touch, like maybe five mil. That's all it needs, five mil hole. How the hell are you going to polish it? I don't know how I'm going to polish it, Jamie. Some things in life are better kept a mystery. For the romance. The what? Romance. Romance? <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, how on earth will I polish this appropriately? Well, I'm gonna use a little, the old double spinner. Make it work like that. 
So you're polishing that on the top, but surely you're just going to wreck the rest of it on that wood. I hadn't considered that, Jamie. <laughs> I think I am wrecking it on that wood. Well, it's not polished yet, though. So. Jamie, I don't know if it's done anything at all. I've got an idea. <laughs> I was thinking, I'm joking, it was the sandpaper that made that noise. There she is before the etch. There she is during the etch. You didn't. Jamie, I just degreased it and then you touched it with your dirty hands. Not dirty. They're oily. They have human oils on them. Now I have to oily. degrease them again. And she goes. Wow. That's going so good. Time to cut the tungsten. Jamie, it's really bad timing, but I have to fart right now. Oh, it's okay, it just went back inside. <laughs> Useless. This stuff is hard. Little notch. What? I thought that would just break right off. It's ripped in half. What fascinating material. Oh, I did almost <laughs> drop it in there. <laughs> I present to you the world's most unique Damascus in that you can barely tell it's Damascus. <laughs> nice high polish on the bright stuff. Super glue. In you go. <laughs> we made a dart. My professional darts career starts now. Ha! Nil pois. Oh. Bullseye! Hey, that was quite close to triple 18. Wait. I think that should be a 20. Super fun little quickie build on the lathe. Thank you so much for watching. As ever, please go check out today's sponsor, Squarespace, down below. And see you on the next one. Bye-bye.